what's up you guys this is Rob from the gay guy plays and today I officially popped my cherry when we get dressed to kill with my latest Tenno Gen haul oh my god you guys this one felt like it took forever to get out but yes the time is finally here now I'm gonna be honest with you this time around they didn't release too many items which my wallet is definitely happy about regardless we got some amazing gems dropped on us as well as my first foray into Tenno Gen so as always let me drop the disclaimer as you all know I have a very specific aesthetic and I tend to be extremely picky when it comes to customization. So first and foremost, don't think that I forgot anything. Just remember that if mama's got nothing nice to say, she's not gonna say anything at all. So please don't be offended if I don't spotlight something that you really like yourself. Because if I'm gonna be frank with you, this is money coming out of my own wallet. That aside, remember that being dressed to kill is all about slipping into something that you love. So who the fuck cares if I do or don't like it just as long as it makes you feel drop dead gorgeous. Alrighty, so as always, let's start things off with the sign Donna's, which all cost $5.99 American. Now, one of the ones that I got super hyped for was the Daru Sign Donna by Malayu. I love the shape, I love the metallics, and I love the way they tested it on different shoulder types to make sure that it fit well. And honestly, it looks fantastic. There's also this little circular bit underneath that anchors to the back of the Warframe that for one reason or another I am absolutely obsessed with. However, there are a few bits that I do need to address. First off, the metallic portion is not coded to the accent section like it usually is, meaning that copying over colors from your frame is gonna be a bit off, for now at least. I actually dug into their discussion notes and I think that they submitted a correction so this issue should be fixed in an upcoming patch. The other bit is the fact the bottom section of the second loop of the Cyan Donna appears tattered. I knew this going into the purchase of it, however I kind of crossed my fingers that the energy effects in game would soften it a bit more than it currently does. Regardless, it kind of looks like a really organic paint stroke, which I honestly can't decide how I feel about it. It comes off a bit unfinished, but at the same time kind of magical. I know I'm just sounding crazy right now, so let's just move along. Okay, so honestly, the Voltara Cyan Donna was definitely not something I was expecting to like. However, I caught a glimpse of it when Megan was wearing it on primetime and I was like, this thing's got some potential. What really won me over was the way that it looked on Ember and Volt Prime. As you can see, one of the energy effects on it makes the pair of downward pointing metal prongs look molten, and I love the energy spike on the tip. I think that the detailing on the back is absolutely badass and works on certain frames quite well. And let's be real, this will be a perfect fit for any Edgelord fashion framers out there. The only thing to be aware of is that this is gonna have some clipping issues with some of the back intensive frames like Siren Prime and Titania, but honestly, that just can't be helped. Alrighty, let's get some full transparency on the next one. The Officium Cyan Donna is a collaboration between me and Hitsu-san. I sketched out the concept and worked on the energy detailing, while he did the heavy lifting when it came to the modeling and remodeling of this baby. Be aware that I will be making a profit off of its purchase, so that is one of the things to keep in mind when I talk about it. The other thing to keep in mind, however, is the fact that I would not release a product that I didn't absolutely love. Now that that's out of the way, holy crap, it is almost everything that I wanted it to be. It's clean, but also complex. It takes colors quite well, and you have not one, but two opportunities to rose gold this shit. As not only is the accent metallic, but so is the primary, so you can totally mix and match metals. I'm thinking true rose gold, accented by one of those fake pinkier rose golds. Now, when I said that it's almost everything I wanted, I definitely need you to be aware that its placement isn't quite where we intended it to be. Upon its release, it was a bit too low. Now, after the most recent patch on some frames, it is way too high. In addition, the outermost ring is supposed to slowly rotate counterclockwise, while the inner ring is supposed to turn clockwise. I've already messaged Rebecca with this, and I believe that Hitsu-san has spoken to his contacts about it as well, so expect those corrections to ship in a future hotfix. However, if you want to use it now, equip the frame that you want to use it on, and you can select it to see if it sits in a position that you're comfortable with. Otherwise, check back in a future hotfix and pick it up when you're ready. Note that I will be doing a separate dress to kill with this once everything is the way that we want it. Because number one, it's my fucking baby and it's the most beautiful baby in the world. And number two, if I ever want Hitsusan to work with me ever again after all of the shit that I put him through, I gotta make sure this was worth his while. So full fucking business transparency right there for y'all. You want more space Doritos in the future? Well, mama's got to get to work. Now that that mess of self-promotion is done, let's get to some helmets, all of which are $5.99 US Dollaruskis. So before we move on to the hot fire, I do have to give a special shout out to Cheshire's Trinity Messiah helmet. To be honest, I wasn't really feeling it until I saw how it looked on the Strega skin, and now I am definitely tempted. So be sure to check that one out for yourselves. 
Now, Arthur Wen is back in action with the Loki Rogue Helmet, which is this really cool hybrid of the Loki Knave and Essence Helmet. I utterly love the Knave's shape, but there was no way that I could use it with my Prime due to the conflicting patterns. So, this is a great way to get that same feeling as well as a motherfucking crest. For those who don't know, that is one of the reasons I was super into the Tall Geese 3, the Sandrock Gundam, and Mercury from Smite. I have never been able to turn down a good fucking crest, and yes, that is my favorite brand of toothpaste. I may need to go into past life regression therapy to get to the root of that. Next up, Reiku literally slays. He motherfucking shreds this round with three absolutely gorgeous helmets. So starting with Atlas, everybody is obsessed with the necklace and the energy piece that sits atop the helm, saying Zenyada, Zenyada, Zenyada. But y'all missed the biggest fucking detail. He gave Atlas a goddamn neck. Now sit in silence for a moment and pay respect, because he fucking deserves it. Next up is his Destrider helmet for Oberon. Honestly, I was kind of worried about this one since I couldn't give two shits about the base model after the Thayark skin came out. And I wasn't sure how well it would look together, but I am happy to say that I really like the pairing. With the previous helmet, he looked like a tree man with hooves, now he looks like a unicorn man wearing tree armor. You know, it's all about having options. Now his last and my personal favorite of the bunch is the Zingji helmet for Wukong. The original was fine, but kind of bug-like, the Dasheng just looked monstrous, but Reiku's take was absolutely perfect. The shape of the face, the addition of the ears, and the energy circlet slash visor is absolutely mind-blowing. If you look really close, it even has script on it like the one ring from the Lord of the Rings, and let me tell you, this one is definitely my precious. Now before we move on, let me just say, when you gonna make full-on skins, but the world of fashion frame is waiting for you. Now last but definitely not least is the Chroma Drevni skin by Volkavi for only $4.99 American. Admittedly, it took me a second to work out how I wanted to customize it, but now I am definitely in love. It makes customizing the pelt far more dynamic, featuring a two-tone gradient and these really cool cracks that you can toss pops of color into. Its detailing is absolutely fantastic, and happily it doesn't interfere with the kind of helmet he's rocking. The only thing that I'm kind of not 100% sure how I feel about are the new energy effects. However, Let's face it, when we pick up a skin, it's because we're looking for something different that the original didn't have, and this definitely scratches that itch. Alrighty, so that about wraps up this episode, which per usual is much longer than I thought it would be. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed, keep an eye out for my dress to kill on the Officium once it gets patched to perfection, and if you've already picked it up, make sure you send some screenshots over to my Twitter as I always love seeing you guys rock it. So thank you all for watching this episode of Dress to Kill. We are slowly and painfully making our creep up to 50k. So if you have a question, make sure that you leave it on the 50k Q&A video. In addition, be sure to check out my latest quick draw on the cost assist and a little bit of love. So if you haven't caught it, be sure you do. Now, don't forget to do all the things that I ask you to do at the end of every one of these. And as always, they drop dead gorgeous. Honestly, I don't even know like what funny joke I could say after this. I'm just like so excited and so humbled and I hope you guys really like it. And I hope it gets fixed soon because I'm trying to look real cute with this on.